Hey guys, my name is Radic. I'm your TA for Economics 1 BO3. And like I said in the last video, for those of you at University of Toronto, this is for Economics 101, or you can use these videos for Economics 101. Special hello to our friends in Germany who also contacted me saying thank you very much for the videos. You're very welcome. Hopefully they, uh, they help. So this video is about monopolies and monopolistic competition. This video examines the implications of market power and how, they, how it deviates from traditional perfectly competitive frameworks. Um, in a perfectly competitive market, price was equal to the marginal revenue, equal to marginal cost, profits were zero, and there existed a lot of uh, competition of a homogenous good. Um, here we throw all that to the curb and create a whole new model. So a uh, monopoly is a firm that has exclusive rights to produce and sell a good. Monopolies can create through patents, economies of scale, or due to access of natural resources. I'm going to skip a lot of the wordy stuff about monopolies. If anybody has questions, you can just post right under this video. And if there's enough questions, I'll make another video on monopolies, but I thought that we'd get down and dirty with the math. So, let me see if this works. Hopefully you guys can see this. So, let's... Uh, Let's make a hypothetical quantity demanded. So let's say 2000 minus 4Q. And let's do a marginal cost that's just equal to, why don't we make it 200? So if you were given this on a test or as an example and it said, find the marginal revenue curve. Well, this is the framework for a monopoly. You have your demand curve. Now, a monopolist doesn't have a traditional supply curve. He has a marginal revenue curve. And here, since our marginal cost is just a number, and you'll see what I mean by it's just a number later, um, it's a constant. So let's say that here is our marginal cost. It's just a horizontal line. So the first thing we want to know is uh, the marginal revenue because we need to find for a monopolist, we need to find the point where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. That's our very first thing that we need to do. So we need to figure out our marginal revenue. Well, marginal revenue is always going to be half the slope of the demand curve. So when we look at this equation here, the 2000 is our vertical intercept. That's this point right here. That is always going to be 2,000. This right here, minus 4Q, that'll change. But basically, the marginal revenue curve is double that. So marginal revenue is going to equal 2,000 minus 8Q. So now we have to set our marginal revenue equal to marginal cost. So we're going to get 2,000 minus 8Q equal to 200. We want to bring the 8Q to one side and we want to bring the 200 to the other. So we get 2000 minus 200 equals positive 8Q. We get 1800 equals 8Q. We divide both sides by 8, so we get 1800 divided by 8 equals Q. And 1800 divided by 8 Oh, geez, I should have done this earlier. It's 225. So, that is this point right here, 225. But that's our quantity. So we need to know what the monopolist sells this at. So we go up to the demand curve. We plug the quantity, 225, into our demand curve. So, quantity demanded equals 2,000 minus 4Q. 2,000 minus 4, 225. 2,000 minus that, um, 900? Yeah, that sounds about right. Does that sound right? Let me grab a calculator. Two 
2000 minus 4 times 225. So that would be minus 900 equals 1100. So that is going to be the price that the monopolist sells this product at. So we're done. So how about another example? So price demanded by the monopolist is 500 minus Q and let's say our marginal cost now is 2Q. Well from what we know from the previous question we're going to get our marginal revenue curve from this. It's going to equal 500 minus 2Q. Now the first thing that we do is set marginal revenue equal to marginal cost. Our marginal revenue is 500 minus 2Q equals 2Q. We bring this over to this side and we get 500 equals 2Q plus 2Q which will give us 500 equals 4Q. So then we just do the math, we divide both sides by 4 to isolate for Q, and we get 125 equals Q. Now the next step is to plug this into our demand curve. Our demand curve is PD equals 500 minus Q, price the monopolist is 500 minus 125. Price demanded equals bleh, 375. So what does that give us? Let's draw this out. Um, and our marginal revenue curve was 2Q. So it's going to be something like that. So this is our demand, this is our marginal revenue, and this is our marginal cost. So this intersection right here was what we got right there, 125. Then we do the dots up to the demand curve, and we go over, and that was that what we got, money, 375. And there you have it. So why don't we do something extra on here? Okay. So this triangle right here is going to be consumer surplus. So what do we need to know? We need to know this point right here. Well, from our demand curve, we see that this is the intercept, 500. Same thing with our marginal revenue curve, it's 500. So it's 500. If you were confused by this, you can also do PD equals 500 minus Q. We know that quantity at this point is zero right, because this is our quantity axis. We know that it's zero here, so we plug zero into Q. So 500 minus zero equals 500. So that's our intercept right there. Now we know this is 125, so we have everything that we need to find the consumer surplus triangle. So consumer surplus equals 500 minus 375, all in brackets, divided by 2. No, wait, we're not done yet. Ah. Okay, so let's do that, and now it's going to be times 125, because that's this area, so we're kind of calculating the area of a box right now, but um, then we just divide this entire thing by 2, and I really should have had a calculator with me. All right, hold on one second, guys. Calculator. All right, so we have our calculator. So we do 500 minus 375. 125 times 125. All divided by 2 equals... So that is our consumer surplus. It is 7,812.5.
So that's the area of the triangle right there, that's consumer surplus. Now, um, if we wanted to know the revenue of the monopolist, that's this entire area right there. Um, so we have 375 times 125, and I won't do that because that's just uh, two. I won't insult you guys. But um, because this is a monopoly, we have a dead weight loss. And that's this area right here. So we have almost all the information. We just need, we need this point right here, and we need this point right here. So to find this point right here, this would be the intersection of the demand curve and the marginal cost curve. So the marginal cost curve is 2Q. The demand curve is 500 minus Q. Um, we bring the Q over to the other side, so we have 3Q equals 500. Um, and Q is 500 divided by 3, and that gives us 166.67. So that point is 166.67. Now we need to know this point right here, and that's the intersection of the marginal revenue and marginal cost curve. So basically, it's going to be um, I'm running out of space here. The marginal revenue curve is 500 minus 2q equals 2q. Bring it over, 500 equals 4q. And that point right there is going to be 125. So that point right there is 125. Sorry, my camera cut out. So right here it's 125. So what do we need? We need this area right here, this area right here. So 375 minus 125 is uh, 250. That's our height. Um, 166.67 minus 125 um, is 41.67. That is our base. So we do for the, there we go, dead weight loss. This will be 250 times uh, 41.67 equals, and we divide it by 2 because it's the area of a triangle. So uh, 5,208.75 is our dead weight loss from the monopoly. So why don't we go back? Where's the other one? Why don't we do this one as well? Um, so we know that the marginal cost on this one was 200. So we have we have this area right here. Now the dead weight loss here is going to be this big sucker of a triangle. Um, so we need to find this point right here, and that's the intersection of the marginal cost curve and the demand curve. Um, so basically, it's going to be. 2000 minus 4Q equals 200, which will give us, why don't we just write it down, 2000 minus 4Q equals 200, 1800 equals 4Q, 1800 divided by 4 equals 4Q divided by 4, we isolate for Q that way, 1800 divided by 4 equals 450 equals Q. So this point right here is 450. So the base of this is going to be 450 minus 225. Gives us 225. The height here is going to be 900. So we do 900 times 225 equals. And then we do divide it by 2 because it is a triangle. So the dead weight loss equals 1,150 um, as a result of the monopoly here. Now just for fun, the, the intercept here is going to be 2,000. And I know that because that is the demand curve and it's 2,000 minus 4 times 0 because the quantity demanded there at that point is 0. So we get 2,000. So the area over here, if we want consumer surplus, that's going to be another 900 here. 
900 times 225, right? Base times height, and then by half. So 900 times 225 equals, divide by 2. So consumer surplus is 1,100, and uh, that's kind of interesting that it worked out exactly the same as the weight, as the weight loss. Um, so yeah, so consumer surplus here equals 101,250. All right. So that is basically my spiel. That is basically my spiel on monopolies and monopolistic competition that I can think of right now. I may add another video about this, and if I do, I will make sure that you guys have a link to it. I'm just looking through the book right now, and... Ooh, perfectly priced discriminating monopolies. Alright, I'm gonna continue with this video after my lunch. Hey guys, um, I'm back. So, the last thing that we left off at was I was saying that uh, perfectly priced discriminating monopolist. I don't know why I'm refreshing your memory on that, because uh, I'm the one who left, not you guys. Alright, so in the last case, we had the monopolist operating on something like this. So we had our demand curve, we had our marginal revenue curve, and we had our marginal cost curve. So first we found this point right here, we went up, we found this point right here, and this was the price. Uh, this was the consumer surplus, uh, this was the revenue that uh, the monopolist made. But now, with a perfectly price discriminating monopolist, it changes. So we kind of, we will forget about the marginal revenue curve. So that is our demand curve. And let's still have the marginal cost curve being like this. So what a perfectly price discriminating monopolist will do, he will charge the maximum reservation price of each consumer. So this sort of monopolist will know exactly how much people are willing to pay for the good. So let's say that there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven people in this society. For the first person, the monopolist will charge it here. For the second person, here, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Well, I didn't draw that quite right, but eleventh guy is down here. So for the first guy, he gets all that. The, the monopolist gets all that. Second guy, all this, 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 and all this. So he, he extracts all the consumer surplus from each consumer. So there's no deadweight loss, which is great for society, but every consumer is charged their maximum price. So say that you want to buy a pizza. Well, keep rolling with the pizza examples, and you're really hungry, and you have 20 bucks in your pocket, and you're gonna starve. You are willing to pay $20 for that pizza. But the next person is a little less hungry than you are, they're willing to pay 18. Next person, well, let's just say that they had an apple about an hour ago, so they're willing to pay 17, right? Then this person over here, he just came back from his mom's place, and he's not really hungry, so he's only willing to pay 11, right? And then the very last person, Let's say that there's a person right here. Um, they, they're not all that hungry, so they're willing to pay ten dollars, which is um, the marginal cost. So this entire area is the monopolist's revenue. He will go all the way up until the point where the marginal cost curve equals the demand curve. That's the minimum price that he'll charge. Anything below this, he's incurring a loss. So these people. Over, over here and beyond do not get serviced. So, why don't we look at the two examples that we had before. So why don't we roll with the very first one first, obviously. So, let's draw this graphically as well, just so I can keep this straight. So remember this point right here? That is our intercept, and that is... 2000. Then we had our horizontal marginal cost curve, and that was 200. 
So we want to know this point right here. So as I was saying, camera cut it. This entire triangle now is going to be the monopolist's uh, profit. So we want to find this point right here. So we just set, we set the demand minus 4q equals 200 equal to the marginal cost to find this point right here. We bring this over to this side, this over to this side, which will give us 2000 minus 200 equals 4q. Divide everything by 4. Well, let's do it step by step. 1800 equals 4q. Now we divide this by 4. We divide this by 4. 1 8 0 0 divided by 4. 450. Quantity equals 450. So this point right here is 450. Now we want the area of the triangle. So it's going to be 2000 minus 200 because that's 2000 minus 200. That's our height times our base, which is times 450, and we divide the entire sucker by 2. So we're going to have 1800 times 450, and we divide it by 2. So this entire area right here is 405,000. And that is our uh, producer, uh, our producer, our monopolist profit. Now, when we look at the original one here, where he wasn't perfectly price discriminating, this block is his profit. In this case, so what is his profit here? It's 900. That's the height times 225. We don't divide it by two because it is a square. So. 900 times 225, that gives us 202,500. 200, so, when he's perfectly price discrim discriminating, perfectly price discriminating, he makes that. And when he is not perfectly price discriminating, not, not, He makes that. So we can see a clear difference. Well, it's uh, it's twice as much. The numbers just kind of worked out that way. It's not always twice as much. So why don't we try one more? Make a line there. So without actually drawing it out, um, we can tell that the intercept's going to be 500 right away. So why don't we draw it out? And we see that the marginal cost curve has a coefficient in front of the variable, so it's 2q, so it's going to be something like that. Um, marginal cost and demand. So right away we know that the intercept is 500. But we need to know this point right here. So we do 500 minus q equals 2q. We want to bring the q over to this side. Yeah, that's all we want to do here. So we have 500 equals 3q, 500 divided by 3, 166.67 equals q. So that is our point right there, 166.67. Yeah, so the one thing that we want to find here now is we notice that it's not a... It's not a uh, flat marginal cost curve like here. It's on an angle. So we still have all the all the relative information, though, or, or relevant information. We know that the height is between 0 and 500, so the height is actually 500. And we know that the base, um, I guess you could, could call that the base, um, is 166.67. Right? So we still have all the information that we need for a triangle. We just divide everything by 2. So the area is going to be 500 times 166.67 oh my god that's a terrible 7 all this divided by 2 so ugh, glare 500 times 
0.67 equals, divide by 2 equals. So here we have the perfectly price discriminating monopolist has profits of of that. Is that right? Okay, well anyways, that area is that's the area of the triangle. So when he wasn't perfectly price discriminating, 500 minus Q, his profits were right here. And the height was 250, base was 125. And his profits were that. So as we can see, not perfectly price discriminating, he made $31,250. So we see that the perfectly price discriminating monopolist yet again is making more money. So who would perfectly price discriminating monopolists be? Uh, they could be your accountant. He has a lot of financial information on you. Your lawyer probably has all your financial information. And even when you go to the dentist, when you're signing up with a new dentist, they're going to ask you things like, where do you work? What's your job? And you'd think that this would be insurance information. And in some cases it is, but in other cases, um, he's actually trying to find out if you are a high income individual or a low income individual. And that way he can actually upsell the services. In some cases, not all dentists do this, but I've heard stories about them doing that. So, unless there's anything else that I need to talk about, I don't think I do. Uh, so that was the chapter on monopolies and perfectly price discriminating monopolists. So my name is Radic. I hope this was useful. And if you guys have any questions, please post underneath. And if you guys are from another university, Post it up. Post up what university you're from because I'm finding that there's a lot of interesting people watching these videos. All right, guys. Take care.